If you've been puzzled by Lebanon's complex governing system, you're probably not alone. So let's take a moment to break it down. It's a country that divides its political power along religious and sectarian lines, essentially trying to give everyone a piece of the pie. But power sharing takes a whole different form in Lebanon. With the stated intention to give every group an equal say in the political affairs of the country, the system has tried to maintain a fragile peace. Usama Makdisi, Rice University's Arab American Educational Foundation chair, describes the system as a single identity where one sect defines one's involvement in the public sphere and one's ability to be appointed to office, to govern, to collect taxes and to punish. The National Pact formed in 1943, which ended the French mandate of the country, created the modern-day states of Syria and Lebanon. Within Lebanon, the government was divvied up so that the president would always be a Maronite Christian, the prime minister a Sunni Muslim, and the speaker of parliament a Shia Muslim. And seats in parliament were set at a ratio of 6 to 5 in favor of the Christians. A constitutional amendment going against the spirit of the National Pact elevated the role of the presidency to the single most powerful position. This imbalance of power stoked tensions in an already fragile system. And with the influx of Palestinians from the Arab-Israeli war, the country was dragged into a 15-year civil war. The era also saw the creation of Amal and Hezbollah entrenching sectarian identities. In 1989, the Taif Agreement transferred much of the president's authority to the cabinet and increased the number of Muslim MPs, finally closing the previous imbalance of power, which ended the civil war the following year and a period called the Second Republic began. The country saw the first democratic elections in 20 years, with Rafiq Hariri becoming prime minister in 1992. He was assassinated 13 years later in 2005. And with a segmented government still in play, sectarian tensions remained. Rafiq Hariri's son, Saad Hariri, formed his unity government in 2009, with Walid Jumblat, head of the 300,000-strong Druze community, throwing his support behind Shia group Hezbollah and the Syrian Alawi government, shifting the balance of power in their favor. In 2016, Michel Aoun won the presidency with the backing of Samir Jaja, another controversial politician with an incredible amount of influence. This gives us a background into the current tensions spreading across Lebanon. On October 17th, protests kicked off over proposed austerity measures, including attacks on popular social media apps. But they expanded to include calls for an end to corruption and for better basic rights. A fragmented government creates an incapacitated system where virtually nothing can get accomplished, and the people say they're fed up with it. Despite the cabinet approving reforms and forming an anti-corruption panel, Along with the resignation of Prime Minister Saad Hariri, the people still haven't been deterred. Hundreds of thousands of protesters have essentially put aside their differences to demand change, and are calling for an overhaul of the entire political system. So, will the people and the government be able to find common ground? Or is it time for a third republic? <laughs>